to beyoungministry.blogspot.com and to the YouTube channel of Be Young Ministry. Today we are in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 21. I'm reading from the voice translation. And the Spirit makes it possible to submit humbly to one another out of respect for the anointed. That's uh, Ephesians 5.21. In Hebrews 6, in verse 1, we read, So let's push on toward a more perfect understanding and move beyond just the basic teachings of the Anointed One. As noted in Hebrews 6, 1, many Christians make Christianity about the lesser teachings in the Bible. They do this because of shallow doctrine. You see, we lack depth, spiritual depth, Therefore, we want to keep talking about the basics of the faith. Yet, when we walk by the Spirit, and we are filled by the Spirit, as noted in yesterday's blog or podcast, we will be concerned with that which concerns God. Our text today makes it clear that humility, submission, and respect are high on God's <clears throat> list of what is really important. The reason these are so important to God is that these qualities provide the rebar for every relationship we have, including our relationship with Him. The remainder of the book of Ephesians bears this out, for Paul talks about our relationships with others, beginning with our spouse, if we have one, and ending with our relationship with the Lord Jesus and many other relationships therein. Despite the fact that the word submit is mentioned in our text for today before the word humbly, we will not be submissive without humility. James 4, 6 reads, God opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. You'll remember that pride is the opposite of humility, and pride inaugurated sin, the very first sin to ever enter into existence, ever entertained, was that of pride. Throughout Scripture, we see pride is the root bed to our rebellion. Now, we come to this second word, this word submit. Paul uses the Greek word hupotasso, which means, uh, or which is, an old military term for lining up under our commanding officer. Hupotasso carries the idea of knowing our commanding officer and as a result of knowing him, following his lead, knowing his voice, knowing his cadence. This is what the Holy Spirit enables us to do, to recognize the voice of the Lord Jesus. And the Lord Jesus is the ultimate example of humility. He freely gave himself up in every situation so that the Father, so that the Father's will could be done and God could be glorified through his life. The problem, however, is that the unregenerate man, and even those of us who are regenerated, we have this incorrect idea of what gives a person power and how that power should be used. Over and over in the Gospels, the disciples of Jesus argued about who would be the greatest in his kingdom. Each of them thought they had earned power and position and prestige with Jesus. They hadn't. Jesus said to them, You have it all backwards. The kings and rulers of this world see the greatest positions, seek the greatest positions of power and importance. But it is not this way in my kingdom. In my kingdom, the greatest are those who serve. So greatness in God's eyes begins with submitting one, oneself to him, which will translate into a life of service. People 
even in the kingdom of God, who are put into uh, powerful positions, if they don't demonstrate submission to God and humility, something's not right. Beware. Beware of those who wield their power. Our final term under consideration in today's text is the word respect. Paul writes, respect for the anointed. The word anointed is referring to the Lord Jesus himself. The anointing came upon the Lord Jesus at his baptism as he humbly submitted himself to the will of the Father. This act of submission led John the Baptist to conclude more of him and less of me. You see, the Holy Spirit lives to point us to the anointed one, the Lord Jesus. The Holy Spirit, one could say, is the shy person of the Trinity. He does not draw attention to himself. He always points us to the servant of all, the Lord Jesus himself. He is the servant leader from whom all of us learn to serve. He's the suffering servant of Isaiah who poured out his life unto death and is numbered with the transgressors. He is the humble servant who washes the dirty feet of his disciples. He is the Son of Man who does not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. We do well to follow his example. Not that we are ever going to be someone's savior, but this is his heart. And when our hearts nestle up to his, he gives us his heart, not for himself only, but for others. My friend, I trust this podcast, this blog is helpful to you in your walk with the Lord. If I can be of any other further help to you, shoot me an email at beyoungministry at gmail.com. Hey, have a great day.